Now, when I was 14 years old, uh, we went from Berlin, Germany, to a little town called Canyon, Texas, which is about 17 miles south of Amarillo, up in the Panhandle. Now, when we first got to Canyon, and I used to, I used to love watching Westerns. I used to watch all the Westerns growing up. And you know how in the Western you see that tumbleweed kind of rolling down the street? They got tumbleweeds in Canyon, Texas. I'm like, what in the world is this place? Are we in the Twilight Zone? Across the street, you have prairie dogs. They come up, you know, little prairie dogs. They come to the little We have prairie dogs. I said, Lord, I said, is Marshall, is Matt Dillon about to walk down the street? <laughs> is Clint Eastwood about to ride down in a pale rider? The good, the bad, that's what it looked like. It looked like an old Western scene. So I had to go cut the grass one day. So I cut the grass in the front. Everything's cool. And I go to the backyard to cut the grass. And that backyard is filled with grasshoppers. I mean, I'm mowing the grass like, pew, 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 pew. I mean, it's like a thousand grasshoppers just scattered. I'm like, whoa, man. And so here I am, trying to be a good, you know, Christian boy. Grasshoppers' lives matter. (laughs) I'm out there saying, scoot, scoot, grasshopper. Get get, get out the way, grasshopper. Let me, you know, I clear a path out. I'd mow the lawn. Then I got to do it again. I'm clearing the grasshoppers out. What took, what should have taken about 20 minutes, taken about an hour to cut this lawn, the backyard. The next time I cut the grass, I'm running over grasshoppers on purpose. I'm killing everything crawling in this grass. I'm just mowing them down. So be on the lookout for my Netflix special, Elder Fitz, the grasshopper killer. I just went, it was, and it was so, so irritating. Just the whole backyard just infested with grasshoppers. It's so bad in the book of Joel. Joel says to the elders of Israel and to the people, he says, tell your children and your children's children about this locust infestation. He says, go and warn them and tell them that if you do what we did, this is what you can expect. The locusts are coming. And so it got me to thinking, do we warn our children anymore these days? I remember growing up, we got warned about everything. I mean, you went to hell for everything. If you shoot chewing gum in church, you're going to hell, boy. You're going to hell. I mean, they were all in our face about sin. You better not do this. You better not do that. You better not go there. You better not say this. No, don't sit to that girl. You go sit over there, and you go sit over there. They warned us about the ills of life. Do we warn our children anymore these days? Because they, they are really, really getting out there where there's almost nothing that they won't do, nothing they won't get involved in, because we have stopped warning our children. We have stopped reading the Bible to them, preaching the gospel to them, telling them about Christ. So for all of you parents who are teaching your children about the Lord, and you're warning them about life, and you're teaching them about how what salvation means, you're teaching them about what repentance and sin means, then I speak a word of blessing over your house in the name of Jesus. For every parent that is raising their children in the admonition of the Lord, I pray that the Holy Ghost so fills your house and blesses your children that they'll be able to go to any college they want to debt-free, that they will have businesses and all kinds of wisdom and all kinds of ideas. I pray the parents will have every resource that will make every opportunity available for your children. I pray the blood over your house. I pray the Holy Ghost just fills your house with wisdom, with dreams, and with visions. Hallelujah. Warn your children because the locusts are coming. We have to prepare them.